Hey everyone, welcome back! We've made it through all of the Incarnon weapons and the Alternox disappointment. Now it's time to take a peek at the last two additions, the Aolak and Hespar. Today we're gonna look closer at the Aolak rifle. I'll be saving the Hespar for later as I still don't have it crafted. This rifle is in an odd spot. I think it's okay, but it could have been a bit better provided the era this weapon has been released in. Post New War, post Galvanize. This is the era where weapons are usually released slightly stronger. Not like in Carnons per se, but guns overall had been stronger because of the issue that Sisters of Parvos tried to address. Older guns being too weak and the reasoning for Galvanized mods and weapon arcane additions in the first place. That said, it's nothing like the Alternox, which was functional, if you could call it that, on the primary fire. Not good, just functional or adequate for base steel path. And in all fire, that was a massive tragedy. So how is the Aolak? It has a full auto primary fire mode and an AoE alt fire. The primary fire sounds more like a traditional AR. In particular though, the gun feels extremely snappy and responsive on the primary. I don't know what exactly it is, but I think the animations start on frame zero, which has a lot to do with the punchy feeling of the weapon. The recoil is tolerable, so from a user experience, or UX, perspective, DE has once again nailed it. It also has pretty adequate TTK and performs well above the average. It isn't impressive, but it's also actually good. Another solid bullet hose rifle. Unfortunately, being a single target weapon and standing beside the likes of the new Incarnon weapons, namely the Fenmore, its reception has been dulled a fair amount. Let's look at some primary fire mode options first. The alt fire I'll save for later. With 21% crit chance and 33% status, this weapon lends itself to a hybrid DPS setup, which is where the meta lies these days. Effective crits with effective status procs to scale off of said crits. First thing I would say is this weapon really wants a minus puncture ribbon. You would open up a mod slot that way by not having to slot hunter munitions, but this is a viral slash build. You'll notice this build doesn't have galvanized aptitude on it. This is a discussion I wanted to have. Where would you put it? If you don't want to run primed banes, then obviously you would slot gun CO over it. Yes, I see that. But for optimal DPS, what do you drop? You can't drop prime shred because punch through is what lets single target weapons compete. Hunter munitions is needed since the IPS distribution kinda sucks for slash. Primed Bane multiplies the bleed by 2.4 times more damage. You need two mod slots to make viral. Galvanized Multishot is the strongest mod on the build because it multiplies damage by 3.3. And obviously, we need both crit mods if we're building hybrid because the weapon doesn't even reach 100% status. Listen closely. Here's the answer. You don't. For base steel path, this rifle is strong enough you don't need gun CO. I did say the primary fire mode is actually good. It's held back being forced to use hunter munitions for scaling damage. Alternatively, you could drop both viral mods for a full corrosive instead, and replace hunter munitions for gun CO. This gives you a raw corrosive build. The weapon also has innate radiation at a very tiny small weight. On a bullet hose weapon, you will still be able to proc radiation somewhat reliably, which will be effective with punch through to crowd control enemies to shoot each other instead of you. Also, an extra status for gun CO to grant you 5 status effects for plus 400% base damage or nearly doubling your total damage output. Because this weapon is a bullet hose, I would strongly recommend Vigilante Supplies to get ammo back while doubling for the crit boosting Vigilante set bonus. Slash builds will use Merciless, which helps the reload speed. Raw damage builds will use Deadhead for the headshot multiplier and a longer lasting stacks. But if you want the best scaling endurance AOLAC, because I said the weapon is actually pretty decent on slashing can scale, then you just don't run viral on the weapon at all. Just another weapon to prime it, whether an Epitaph or a new core, or even a Contagion Primer Azorus. These two empty slots, replace them with gun CO to double your damage and hammer shot to ramp up your crits and status more. You can still proc Slash naturally, and Slash naturally has a 28.3% IPS split on this weapon, so by modding no elements, every status proc has a 28.3% chance to be Slash, on top of the Hunter Munitions proc. Our status reaches 85.8, so with 28.3% slash bias, every shot that comes out has a 24.2% chance to slash proc your target, which is very similar to what Hunter Munitions itself will do on this build. 
especially if you don't run Arcane Avenger with Combat Discipline to pass 100% crits. Overall, I find all of these primary fire modes are decent. Pick whichever one you want for base steel path as they're all capable of ripping enemies apart. I would have wanted just a tad more crit chance on the rifle though. A 25 or 28% base crit would have really made it fit in with the more recent weapons released since Parvos onwards and stand on its own as a new arrow weapon. I do have slight qualms with the 40 magazine being a bit small too as well, but with the snappiness feel of the weapon and the tolerable 1.5 second reload with Merciless, I can overlook it. Alright, so we've established the primary mode is very viable in Steel Path and Standalone, it's actually a pretty good uh, quote-unquote rifle, Fenmore notwithstanding. I think DE did a pretty good job with its fire mode, as it's fully capable of keeping up with life support drain without relying on the absolute best setups, like say Garuda Slash with their 4, or Eclipse, or Roar. You probably know by now this weapon also has an alt fire. It's an auto charge that auto shoots at full. It sounds pretty cool, though it is a tad quiet. The UX, in my opinion, is weaker than the primary mode. You don't get the satisfaction of your shot. The impact effect is smaller and duller than I would expect. The weapon also lacks the punchiness of the primary fire in this mode. It consumes 10 ammo per shot, meaning at default you can only shoot it 4 times before reloading. It has a 7 meter AoE and is pure blast damage. This is where the problems begin with this weapon. Blast is a very ineffective damage type as DPS and although it only makes up the base damage, you're still invalidating a portion of your damage. It uses the same crit and status lines as the primary fire mode. It only has 789 damage. Only I say, which is much higher than most weaponry, but keep in mind this is a charge shot fire mode. You actually do more single target raw damage dumping the primary fire mode mag than using 4 alt fires, but does it even kill well in AoE? It's pure blast at base and look, it has 7 meter AoE which is on the smaller side but also the 90% falloff stat Brahma has. I don't need this to be a Brahma, I don't even need this to be a Tonkor, but there are already several drawbacks to this fire mode. At least live up to existing dual mode weapons like the Stalta, which was by the way released 2 years ago. It's not even meta but a good example of a decent quote unquote rifle. It's easier to see what I mean after we go over and test the builds. Our first choice is the ever obvious viral slash AoE build. This is basically what a Brahma would do, except the fire rate mod is replaced with an actual amalgam serration since the raw base damage is a bit low, and the fire rate mod on Brahma is replaced with missing toxin elements since Aelak has no progenitor. Gunseal does not work on the AoE, so we didn't mod it. The Prime Bane will double dip leads for 2.4 times more damage, and obviously we have viral modded to scale with hunter munitions. Then generic multi shot and crit mods. You cannot see it in the UI, but the projectile does 97 damage with forced impact. It's useless and we will ignore it. The AoE on the other hand, like I said, does 789 pure blast damage. So modding viral means we only get two elements out of this. The blast damage is a detriment to DPS since it's a shitty element, but at least it will serve to reduce enemy accuracy. As we have pure viral modded on top of the blast, this means no elements are present to stagger enemies. Normally when you shoot an AoE weapon, if it has IPS, impact, puncture, and slash procs, while only being the base weight, can lightly CC enemies per shot with staggers, lowering chances of you being hit back. Aelak does not have this, and also lacks the progenitor utility of Kuva and Lich weapons while also lacking the base damage of a true AoE weapon. This is seen in how unreliable it is at killing enemies. The bleeds do not do enough damage when you don't group up enemies and you have to reload every 4 shots. Even with grouping, you still cannot reliably kill all enemies in 1 or 2 shots due to the extreme damage falloff, low base damage for an AoE, and just unreliable crits until you use Avenger. So, we've established that the AoE of Aelak is incapable of proper KPS without grouping and even with grouping, the viral slash build lags behind and underperforms. This is why I find the alt fire mode lacking. It's basically in the same spot as Alternox, but at a much better baseline. Instead of a passable primary mode with useless alt fire, we get a good primary mode with a somewhat usable alt fire. There's a way around this though that I can recommend, but it doesn't scale to endurance as well since it isn't slash, and it's still limited by the base damage and fall off problems. It's adequate for base steel path though. This is an electric grouping AOAC. Because we don't need Hunter Munitions anymore, we can drop it for Prime Firestorm to boost the middling base range to 11.62 meters. Normally this wouldn't be as important, but with 90% falloff, it is. And because Electric scales off at of Elementals where a Slash doesn't, we will double slot Electric mods over the Viral. This build only has 52.8% status, but it's more than enough. I would recommend running Primary Deadhead for the extra headshot multiplier since Electric Dots can chain heads. But if you don't want to deal with the 2 second reload, feel free to run a Merciless instead to cut it down to 1.5. This also means you don't need to aim at heads occasionally, but keep in mind this also means you're losing a lot of damage. Also, ragdoll hitboxes on grouping would multiply your damage too, even if you don't aim at heads. 
In all builds today, we still have Vigilante Supplies to boost crits further. The performance of the Allfire is now actually decent. You can one-shot the group of gunners most of the time, and this is the build I would recommend for base steel path. However, due to the lacking crit stacks, ammo usage, charge delay, and lower base damage for an AoE with extreme falloff, I wouldn't recommend using the Allfire for endurance. If anything, the Pure Slash Primary Fire Mode will probably outperform the Electric Allfire if you use an external primer with grouping and endurance. As a comparison, I also made a Pure Electric Deadhead, a primary fire mode to compare to the AoE Electric build to really show how small a gap there is between primary and alt fire. 10 ammo versus 10 ammo. There isn't really reason to use this with the primary fire mode since the slash build scales better and the rock corrosive kills faster at base steel path on the primary modes, but hopefully this highlights my issues with the AoE on this weapon. There you go, a comprehensive breakdown on the new AOLAC rifle. The primary fire mode is commendable and actually good, though I feel it could still get a bit of a boost in the current era of single target weapons with the crit stats. The AoE mode is a travesty. Here, take this comparison to Stalta for the sake of it. The viral build, while inconsistent, can generally 1-2 to two shot groups of enemies. Yes, you only have 2 shots per mag, but Stalta just feels so much better of a weapon with a dual mode alt fire. And don't even get me started on the UX of how Stalta's alt fire feels compared to ALX AoE. You want a solid bullet hose weapon that isn't the Fenmore? The ALX does a decent job at it. You want a rifle with AoE alt fire? Don't use this. I'd much rather use the Tenet Tetra, Tenora Prime, Stalta, or even others for those. All three of these that I mentioned have better damage, better scaling, a better primary mode, or just a much better user experience when using the weapon's alt fire. And two of those weapons are old already. What did you think? If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible, like I've done with covering Angels of Zeroman updates and these new weapons. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? And that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.